that at least there is some connection with some of the uh, Bigfoot and and the UFOs. Uh, people have claimed they've actually seen um, Bigfoot getting out of a uh, out of a UFO. I don't think that they all are coming from the UFOs. I think many of them just live here on the in the remote areas, you know, like any human or any creature. Um, so I don't know if they're all connected with them or if they have some kind of a buddy type relationship where one's helping the other. Um, I don't know. It's hard to get definitive answers on some of this. Or maybe they're being abducted too and, and experimented on. <laughs> I, I actually hadn't thought of that one. I mean, who knows? That's that's not out of the realm of possibilities. Uh, we did have um, we have a man who lives. Um, let's see. I think it's northeast of uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, and. There was a lot of logging being done in the area where he lives, which is kind of out in the country. And so the Bigfoot were losing some of their territory, and they moved into uh, land adjacent to where he lives. And he said one night he heard them making noises outside, and he went out, and there was this gold-colored UFO, and we do have pictures of it that he took, um, you know, over the very area where the Bigfoot were, and the Bigfoot were making noises and pointing up. So, uh, wow. that's, uh, you know, one of the stories that we've gotten and we're able to post, you know, on our website. Right. Now, I read a story not too long ago where there was, um, there was a report of a cryptid that was, um, well, it was killing li- um, large livestock, like three horses that they found dead and they were drained of blood. And I can't remember the name of the cryptid. Um, Mm, can't think of it, but anyway, yeah. as you, have you had any more reports like that of, of something killing large livestock and draining the blood from it? Um, I know that Linda Moulton Howe is, you know, the one who really cracked that story wide open, and to this day, I think she rem- remains the expert on it. Uh, we have not done a story on anything of that nature. Okay, and we I, have I, not had reports. We've not had reports of anything, you know, where cattle are being mutilated. We haven't had those reports. Right, right. And how about, have you had people coming forward that um, say, hey, we've been abducted for many times all through our lives and, and it's still going on or any lost time new, uh, coming forward and, and they think they've lost time but they're not sure and any any cases like that coming up new? Yeah, and some of the people who are pretty confident that they've been abducted, there is uh, an element of fear, like part of them wants to know what happened and the other part of them doesn't want to know. And so, you know, ideally, uh, the people who've had those experiences, if they can ever connect with a truly good and understanding hypnotherapist, that's great so that they can, uh, you know, get to the truth of the matter. But those... But those are few and far between. You don't find too many uh, hypnotherapists who are open to the idea of alien abductions. So you need to find somebody who's good at what they do and also has an open mind about uh, what some of these people are experiencing. Yeah, and that was like with the implants. And um, I think, what was his name, Dr. Lear, he, he did a lot of those. But I don't think nobody's picked up the torch. Um, have you I heard know. somebody... Go no, ahead. after he died, I don't know of anybody who's really stepped into his shoes. He was um, doing a very unique thing, and, um, you know, those the things that they uh, removed from people were very convincing. Oh, I just thought of something. We did have a man uh, who lived not too far from the Perry Center, and he um, clearly had had some kind of abduction experience, and it really, really bothered him, and he... Uh, finally found a dentist that he trusted, and there was um, an implant that had been put in or, in or around his teeth, um, and he he was relieved when it was removed. Um, before that, he was very um, agitated and very concerned and very worried. Um, as a side note, this particular man at one time lived in Brooksville, Florida as a child, and he was abducted as a child, and his story was actually the 
inspiration for, it may have been a Disney movie, Flight of the Navigator. And it's about a young boy who, you know, actually flies the plane. I know, I'm sure the basic story was, you know, made into a movie and went far beyond what the truth was. But his original abduction story was the one that inspired the movie, Flight of the Navigator. Well, I think I've seen that. Hey, um, let me ask you this, uh, Mary. Any new updates on uh, Earth changes? Mm, that's not something I've been digging into uh, real recently. Um, so I don't know if I have anything that uh, would be newsworthy to, to anybody at the moment. Uh, clearly, uh, the weather changes um, and the earthquakes and the increased volcanic activity and things of that nature, clearly there um, are earth changes going on. Um, but I don't have any specific information to give you. What's your opinion on the Ant Antarctica thing that's been going on for the last year or so? Uh, again, if, if people go to our website, skyshipsovercashers.com, when they have some time, and just type in the word Antarctica into the search bar, uh, we've done uh, a number of stories on it. Uh, there's just, you know, a ton of information, and uh, clearly there are things going on down there. Um, this man that I mentioned, Bill Tompkin, he is one of the ones who uh, came forth with what's going on, and um, I, I think it's a race of reptilians have been in an underground place in Antarctica for it, uh, who knows for how long, but certainly before World War II. And um, they've expanded on the volcanic tunnels that are in Antarctica. You know, we think of Antarctica as just being cold, but there are more volcanoes uh, than anybody could imagine on the western part of that uh, uh, continent. And the, the lava, lava flow tubes uh, have created spaces that are big enough that uh, they've been used for underground facilities. And during World War II, the Nazis uh, teamed up with the um, reptilians, and so they also had uh, a, an adjacent facility um, underneath Antarctica. There's a ton of things. I mean, we have uh, mm -hmm. uh, pictures of uh, very large entrances going into Antarctica, big enough for large planes to fly into. Um, and what I've done, whenever possible, I give people the coordinates so that you can go to Google Earth and you can find some of these things for yourself. And I think that's wonderful because, you know, it kind of counteracts uh, the possibility of uh, people doing a Photoshop trick on us. And when you can find things for yourself uh, with Google Earth, it's, um, you know, it's very helpful. Absolutely. I agree totally. Didn't um, Admiral Byrd uh, had a uh, thing... A an excursion or whatever, and he went there, and uh, he thinks I think something was covered up about it, or they weren't telling everything, or I don't know, it was something fishy there. I remember years ago, way he, back. He had he had he had two uh, diaries, and one was lesser known and came out later, and it talks about when he flew into this you know opening they found that uh, went you know was all snowy, and then they went in flew into it. And it's like the inner earth, and it's quite a, um, you know, quite a story. We've, again, we've done so many stories, I can't off the top of my head tell everybody exactly where they are. But if you type um, Admiral Byrd into the search bar, maybe the, the stories that we've done on him will come up. And we do quote uh, from his uh, uh, lesser-known diary when he talks about his um, experience, you know, in the hollow, in, within the earth. Yeah, and, and what's your? You know, he, had, he Go he's ahead. another man with a great reputation. You can't just you know blow it off like he's just you know some um, you know jerk who doesn't know anything. Uh, he he was very well respected. Uh, absolutely. Now, what's your opinion on disclosure? Um, is it all malarkey? Whatever happened, or or what's your opinion on that? Um, I think that people that, who are waiting around for the government to make this big announcement to all of us are very um, are being fooled. I think disclosure is coming out with shows like uh, 
uh, what you're doing and what Gary does and what many other people do and what we do on our website, I think the truth is coming out that way, and more and more of it's coming out. I think one of the uh, the best things that's happened, whether it's all true or not, is the Ancient Alien series on uh, the History Channel, because they present it in such a way that you have to at least contemplate that this might be a reality. So this is how people's minds are opening up. This is how people are uh, being exposed to these other realities. Uh, and to wait around for our government uh, to make the big announcement, I think, that will only happen if the government is forced into doing it. The, the disclosure is happening in these other ways on a regular basis. Yeah, I don't see it happening. That means they would lose face and a lot of people would be held accountable for all the money lying and all that more all that money go through all the years, you know what I'm saying? So, well, Absolutely, <laughs> right. Yeah, they don't want to admit that they've been lying to everybody for so long. Absolutely. And... Um, yeah, it's a lose lose, and I I think that everybody should do their own research, get out there, and and um, try to discern the good from the bad, and do like you you were talking about. Get your camera, get out there, and look in the sky. Right? Yeah, there's, there's yeah, there's many many ways to do it. We uh, the problem is that we are like cattle. We go around, you know, cows go around with their head down all the time eating grass. Uh, <laughs> we as human beings. Um, walk around with our cell phone and we're looking down or we're inside with our computer you know zeroed in on the computer all the time and uh, you know we miss a lot but there was a gal here in town who uh, left the grocery store in the early evening it was you know like twilight and she saw a ufo in the sky well there was lots of other people on the road there was lots of other people driving around there was a lot of other people in the parking lot why, you know, none of them are looking up. And, uh, you know, she happened to, and uh, she got curious enough that she pulled over and, you know, observed what, what was going on. Uh, we're just very um, self-absorbed, and we aren't looking. We're not, we're simply not looking up enough. No, technology has got us dumbed down. We, we don't do like we used to 30 years ago. In some ways, ago. I mean... It's a wonderful tool because, you know, we're able to do so many things and we can very quickly look things up and, and much faster than we used to. I mean, in my lifetime, you'd have to go to the library and if they, you know, they probably didn't have what you were looking for anyhow. You can get a tremendous amount of information on the Internet. So I'm not poo-hooing that at all. But if you lock your whole life into that computer or into your cell phone or into your TV, you are missing out on, you know, perhaps some very incredible things. I agree totally. And, you know, just two weeks ago, I was walking uptown, and I just happened to look up, I look up, you know, it was the middle of the day, and I did see something that was real high going real fast, and I, I snapped a few pictures. I've never seen nothing that high going that fast before, but, you know, I wasn't looking down at my phone. I was just looking up. I was trying to see if I can see something, you know, being aware, being aware of my surroundings. Right, right. And uh, we have one guy, I think he must work the night shift, but um, he looked up one night and he saw a UFO. Well, now uh, he's become obsessed with it. You know, he's looking out every night when he gets home and he's getting pictures. Yeah, yeah it gets you hooked. Yeah. And, and uh, if you can do that, that's more legit evidence, I think, because it's not somebody's saying hearsay and passing this picture on here. It's something you've done and researched. And you got a passion for right. it. Right. Right. Yeah. And some of these pictures, even if you have a small camera, uh, which will even make the moon look small, but even if it's just like what appears to be like a small light, you can, t you can transfer your photos, if you have a memory card, to your computer. And you can, you know, zoom up and, you know, make it bigger and, and zoom in. And, and uh, sometimes the incredible detail will... will be revealed that you wouldn't see um, otherwise. So that's another way people can, you know, see better things for themselves. I agree totally. Now, you mentioned the moon. Um, what's your opinion on uh, a lot of uh, people's speculation about there's aliens on the moon, they were there when we, when, uh, we got there? Uh, what's your feelings on that? 
from everything I pieced together, I think that uh, the backside of the moon is very active, and uh, uh, I. Think